social media is an often underutilized but effective tactic for B2B marketers. I'm Marketing Sherpa reporter Courtney Eckerly here at the Marketing Sherpa Media Center at IRCE. And with me to talk about that a little bit, I have Jeff Foreman, who is the Content Marketing Manager and Marketing Analyst at Edmund Optics. Welcome. Got it. Thank you, thank you. So to start off, just tell me a little bit about your background and your role at Edmund. Sure, so Edmund Optics is a B2B industrial optical component manufacturer. So we're not manufacturing eyewear, we're manufacturing lenses for integration into uh, rifle scopes, laser systems, medical devices, those type of things. So very B2B audience. I entered Edmund Optics close to five years ago and currently I manage all of our content marketing strategy. So social media, uh, SEO, PPC, those type of things. Okay. So we actually, we have a slide from, from your IRC presentation sure. that we can pull up, but tell us how you, you got started. This is one of your, your initial tests with social media, correct? Yeah, so this is actually our organic engagement for LinkedIn, and LinkedIn we've always found to be a great opening uh, to explore social media for a B2B company like ourselves. A lot of people discount LinkedIn. Uh, they, they think Facebook, they think Twitter, YouTube. We actually have an entire content map structure of what type of content we put on what channels. When it comes down to really trying to express M and Optics for the company it is with our our uh, technical capabilities and the products we have, LinkedIn is really, really where we see that that engagement. So, what are some? You say LinkedIn specifically, but what are some uh, effective platforms or tactics that B two B marketers can use for for lead generation? Sure. Yeah. So. Using LinkedIn example, for one, social media very much now is moving in that direction where you have to, to pay to play. I mean, it's kind of sad. Facebook made the, the changes to their, their structure where now you really have to pay to boost the ad so that people can or boost the post so that your followers will, will see it. Uh, LinkedIn, for instance, the, the great thing about LinkedIn ads, specifically sponsored updates, is that you could target group affiliation, so group memberships. Uh, in the, the optics world, for instance, you have a lot of groups on LinkedIn that are professional organizations. They are our target markets. They are groups for optical engineers or optical engineering students. And through a sponsored update in LinkedIn, we could identify the, the followers, the group of this, uh, this group membership base, which is essentially our target market, grouping themselves together, you know, waving, you know, hey, this is us, this is who you want to talk to. So we put out the post, we enter the demographic information of, you know, this is the group, and we, we sponsor the update. And the nice thing is it appears in the person's private newsfeed. So, you know, their friend joined a new job, uh, this person liked this, Edmund Optics sells industrial components, and we manufacture a lot of what we have. So you have all that right there, and people, uh, they engage with it. So you, in your role, you uh, focus on social media and content, but you're also an analyst. What's the, what's the relationship there? Yeah, so I, uh, I took this kind of winding path in a career that started with the uh, decision to graduate school as an English major. You know, some people say that's kind of questionable, and I worked in a hospital for a little bit, kind of this winding path, and I ended up in an engineering company uh, so that's doing optics. And I decided, you know what, for me to really understand digital marketing. And let me clarify, I think, one thing is that I'm not saying social media is the answer for everybody. I'm not saying that at all. I also, I'm not saying that social media is the focus for everybody. Social media is one piece of a puzzle. If social media doesn't work with your SEO strategy, your PPC strategy, your email strategy, everything has to be together. We're a direct mailer. We still mail out a 450 page catalog. So it's all, all together. You have so much data now. If you really want to get into digital marketing, if you really want to understand how your marketing strategy is working, how your content strategy is working, how your PPC account, social media is working, you got to understand the numbers. So I ended up taking coursework in predictive analytics, predictive modeling, you know, some basic analytics, and tried to join that two side of the really qualitative uh, analysis with the quantitative analysis and then bring it all together. So what you're saying is you really have to test to see if it, what combination will work for you. You have to test, you have to understand your test results, and you have to understand what's going into a test, because the, the downside of testing is that you get a result from something, right? It may not be the result you think it should be. So there's your first issue. The tests are saying something different than what I expected. Do I choose the, the answer from the test, or do I choose my, uh, my intuition? So there you go, you already have this, this type of split. But then you have to understand the variables that are going into the test. 
did this test perform better because uh, its location in a better a banner uh, ad rotation cycle, or because of the color or the language used? You have to understand all the variables going into it, and I mean that can get complicated, especially when you have so many tests going on, so much data coming in from so many different platforms, and I mean whether you want to call it big data or a lot of data or a crap load of data, whatever you want to call it, there's a lot of data being generated, that much we know, and it's not going to end. Um, nowadays, I mean, I just bought a home and I put a, a smart system in the home. That's all generating data. I mean, everything is generating data. If you go to Disney World now, you wear their little magic band bracelet, and that is the most perfected system of data creation of anyone I've ever, ever seen. I mean. Marketing has to understand how they're taking this data and applying it to, to what they're doing and the results that are coming out of it. So what's an example of how you've been able to do that uh, effectively at Edmund? Sure, it's tough. I mean, it's not something that we just suddenly start being able to do. It's not something that I say is perfect every, every single time. We have issues with data. Everybody has issues with data. I've talked to companies that are smaller than us, that are significantly larger than us, and everyone is facing the same issue of what do we do with all this stuff, whether it's generated through social media or, or something else. One of our best uses of data, actually, uh, falls to our mail plan development for our catalog. It is such a data-driven strategy, it's, it's insane. And that's just to mail out something physical. But when you're looking at uh, social media, for instance, we want to be able to understand the engagement rates that our content's being consumed, but also we want to make sure that the individual is leaving the, the social platform if we're trying to get them to leave coming to our website and engaging, whether that's a product purchase. Uh, and we are a B2B company, but we do have an e-commerce website. So we sell to the B2B world uh, online as well. Or it's a, a contact, a lead generation, or whatever it, whatever it may be. Okay. So um, I guess bringing that back into social media, I think a lot of marketers, especially in B2B where it's less common to work with social media very closely, yeah. they, they say, oh, social media is so hard to quantify. And yeah. what uh, metrics would you suggest they look at? One, you got to identify what are you trying to do. It's a big picture. And I will be the first to say that when I approached social media, I, I said, you know what, there is no way this is going to work. We're selling industrial optics. Most of it's glass. I mean, it's, it's clear glass. How are we going to, we can't put this on Pinterest. And we don't, we don't put it on Pinterest. So to understand your social world, it's not just about the followers. And I have this whole system of what I call uh, macro and micro uh, conversions and engagement metrics. So I look at your, your basic. End of the day, we're trying to drive revenue somehow. So we want to see if there's site conversions or lead generations. We have this catalog. We want to see if our catalog is being requested because if somebody is requesting our catalog, we know that that's going to eventually lead to a conversion because all our catalog is is product and we have a very direct correlation between a catalog request and a, a, uh, a purchase down the line. Then you have your, your on-site metrics. So if someone's leaving the social media platform, coming to your site, you know, evaluate your bounce rate, evaluate the, the other engagement metrics. How long are they staying? Uh, you know, where are they leaving the site? And you, you go from there. There really isn't a cookie cutter answer to what is the best thing. Do you want increasing conversions? Do you, know, you only care about how many people are following you? Which I don't, I don't recommend at all. Um, lead form generations. I mean, a lot of times the metrics are, are pretty simple and they're right in front of you. What do you think should be the answer to what you're, you're looking for? You're trying to boost uh, catalog requests or form submissions. So you want to look at, see how people are engaging with that. And the metrics are sort of defined by the goal. So B2B marketers need to test and understand what they're looking at when they're looking at those numbers and what they're telling them. Yes, B2B marketers need to know that the world of marketing is very, very broad and there really isn't a best channel. And I understand that with data comes the issues with attribution, and attribution, in my opinion, is borderline impossible. True attribution, because you may be exposed to a banner that may lead to a conversion down the line, but it may be just an exposure, not a click. Uh, was it because they saw you at a trade show? It's, it's almost impossible. But you need to be able to bring in that data, consume it, and have some basic understanding. You don't have to be a quantitative uh, mathematician. You can just have a basic understanding of, of what you're really looking for. Great, thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to sit down with us. Thank you, glad to do it. <laughs> and if you would like more tips, tactics, and case studies, please visit marketingsherpa.com.